What is up, Epic community? I can't tell you how much that hurts to say. I, we really need to stop with these 2012 memes, John. The word epic is just, it's too nine gag for my likings. Anyway, hi everybody, Spud Cubs here with another update, apparently. The From the Depths devs have jumped the gun and just given us 2.4.8.3. Uh, I don't know if it was on dev test at all, but it definitely made it to stable. Quick note, should dev test actually exist, because this is an early access game, at least for the next month and a half, should dev test actually ever exist, because it seems like people on dev test just go for the new features, but they don't actually give developer feedback or any, uh, any feedback for the game so the developers can do something about it? Isn't the whole game an early access, like dev test? Isn't it the entire thing an alpha slash beta slash give us feedback? What's the point of, of dev test? Anyway. Look at what we got here. It's going to be a big update. They've really slapped us with a whole lot. When they say numerous bug fixes, tweaks, and new additions, there are, they aren't lying. Uh, there is quite a lot in this update, good and bad. A couple things that have been asked for for literally years. Like, I've been playing FTD for three years. Like, Robaz got me started on it. I have 4,000 hours in the game. And I've heard people talk about tank tracks since before I started playing FTD. Like, the first time I was ever in an FTD anything, I was in a tank competition. I created Metal Gear. You might remember it if you're an uh, FTD veteran. The stupid, huge, big thing. Everyone was talking about tank tracks because the competition was about tanks. Everyone wanted tank tracks, and they finally did it. They coded in tank tracks. Here's how they did it. Because, look, look at this. Tank tracks will wrap around wheels automatically choosing to lay above or below wheel depending on placement. That means depending, like look over here, depending on where your wheels are oriented, the tracks will kind of connect there. The easier way to think about it is the track will always connect to the bottom of the wheel. Now, I do have a concern about this screenshot because I know adding tank tracks would require new animations, it would require new models, possibly new textures, although I would assume you could just use the wheel texture. This is the tank tracks, these green lines. This isn't some like Gary's Mod modeling or AI path viewer. These are the tank tracks from what I can understand. Um, and these little arrows show the forward. I just noticed that there's a little arrow on the tank that shows the forward uh, dimension. Anyway, I heard from my Discord channel that it's not actually in-game, like physical tank tracks. It's fake news. And what I mean by that is these green lines are the tank tracks. There's no physical tank track. It's just this. Although I think the entire point of people wanting tank tracks in the first place was purely visual. So this doesn't really do anything for us. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, functionally. This isn't functional for us. I mean, you can argue, you can... You can do it like those little RC cars where you go up the wall and the thing flips over and you could still drive, but you could just put upside down wheels. Anyway. anyway, let's go down to the AI cards. This next little thing. We talked about this in the last little update video. These preset AI cards. Now, I actually have a problem with preset AI cards like this, primarily because they put them in the, look, they put them in the card slots. So when you go to the AI menu and you see card slots, you click card slots, boom, there it is. My concern and my issue with this is that new players who don't know how to set up AI at all will see this. One, they will see this as the only way to set up AI because they don't know how to do it. You know, when the detection update hit, when detection was first introduced, did you know you can click Q on detection parts? Since they came out, you can click Q on them and adjust them adjust how fast they detect things compared to how accurately, and adjust which detection pieces take priority over other ones based on uh, bearing and, and uh, distance accuracy. Like, you can make your radar give... Uh, if you have a radar 90 and an infrared 90 detection system, like those are the only two detection points, parts you have, you can make one prioritize bearing and make the other prioritize range. What I'm saying is your range estimates will come from, let's say, your radar if you put the priority up, and all of your angle estimates, like bearing to the target. Okay, thank you. Thank you, truck. Thank you for beeping. So um, you can basically split the roles 
and priorities of each each detection information. I bring this up because it's not information that is readily given to the player. No one was told you can click Q on your infrared trackers and make them better at tracking fast targets over longer distance targets. Nobody told you that. And I bet you half the people watching this video never knew that to begin with. Yes, you can click Q on your radar and make it better for seeking longer distance targets rather than faster targets. Yes, you can do that. My concern with the f with blah, 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 blah. my concern with the AI cards here is people are going to get in the game, see these AI cards, and that's it. That's the end of story. They're not going to figure maybe I can do something else with them. They're not going to figure maybe I can adjust my AI. No, because this is just simplifying the system too much. It's it's drawing it into a different system. You're, you're simplifying it into the build mode instead of simplifying it into the AI menu. If you localize everything into the AI menu, such as these presets, putting them into an AI menu, such as the, a preset menu, players will set up their AI and immediately go to the AI menu. Well, the AI menu. Because they don't have this. They don't have a need to go into the AI menu if they already have it set up. It's, it's almost like a Darwinian behavior. You don't need to perform a more complex behavior if you're already surviving with a simple behavior. And as a player who's not going to spend 100 plus hours into a game, I'm not saying me, I'm saying blankety blank player, any player who's not going to invest 100 plus hours into FTD will not invest the time into learning the AI system, especially when there are uh, cards like this. Now, I understand that might be the point is to allow players to play without uh, fully functioning or fully understanding the AI system and all of its nuances. But this raises that issue again that I'm saying of people are going to click card slot. Not only are they going to think this is all they can do with AI, but they're going to think that these, what, five AI cards are the only things that are there. Now, I propose what if you just made everything in FTD? including these prefabs, including these sub-objects, do it like uh, Gary's Mod, was it Gary's Mod 9? No, 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 I'm sorry, Gary's Mod 12. Do it like Gary's Mod 12 did, where they had a toy box. Where you, uh, instead of the normal spawn menu, you, you can open the toy box menu, which is basically just the spawn menu, but open to Steam Workshop. What I'm saying is allow a more intuitive game from the depths to be formed by bringing everything together. Instead of having AI presets somewhere else and having AI menu on its own, put them together. Instead of having Steam Workshop and then your own designer, just put them together. And instead of having all these different planets and chemicals, you know, instead of selecting your planet and then selecting everything from your planet, just level selector, you know, it, it like neater, and then menu, single player, you know, something like, anyway, going back to the, the cards, what do you guys think of the AI cards? Because I, if, if anything, if they're going to keep the system, they need to expand it and maybe separate the target prioritization and aim point selection cards, because those are obviously like main necessary cards, although if you take my advice at all, never use, uh, what is, what is that card called? Uh, propulsion balancing. If that, ex is, if that, if that exists in the game still, never use it. It will kill all of your vehicles. It is terrible. Moving on forward, we can see the presets and how you can, uh, approach these presets. Why not just have this as the AI? Like, This, I mean, unless these images are in the AI menu already, I don't want to say you're not doing something that you are. So, you know, if if these are, because this is a fresh update, I haven't gone into the game to see these images. These images are on the update, and it, it makes it uh, easier for players to understand the AI due to these diagrams. Let it be so. You know, let it be so. Uh, just ignore what I say if I'm saying anything wrong. We're going to move on to tweaks, because everything's getting tweaked. APS is getting to major changes to APS. I'm going to talk about that in a separate video because there's a whole list of proposed changes to advanced cannons and shields for the best or the worst. I, I think they're they're pretty good changes, although I'll get into that in said update. But uh, let's get into this because they're changing everything. 
Missiles are getting a rework. Lasers are getting a rework. Shields are getting a rework. Steam's getting a rebalance. Everything's getting a rebalance. Look under your chairs. There's a rebalance everywhere. If you're a front the apps feature, you're getting a rework. And just just to uh, reinforce, this is all happening because From the Depths has a month and a half until September 22nd, so two days after the Area 51 raid. Uh, September 22nd to fully release, as in like a 1.0 fully release, as in it comes out of early access on Steam. It'll be a full game. Do you have high hopes for that? At this point, I honestly, I, I can't say I do, because although they are making these changes now, it seems like a scramble. Um, they're balancing a game with no gameplay. Now, a lot of people might hate me for saying that, but I, I really do believe there's no actual gameplay to From the Depths anymore. Anymore. Uh, it had some semblance of gameplay with the five resource system because it was a real-time strategy game. To some degree, you had to manage your resources. Some, to some degree, you had to find out, okay, if I make too much scrap, I don't have enough metal for my hulls, but I need scrap for my cannons. You had to manage your time, you had to manage your resources, and ships were good because some ships had a lot more weapons. Some ships had a lot more ability to carry ammunition for the fight. Now, some ships had lasers, which made them really expensive, but really quite powerful. Now, because everything is one resource, now because um, they want to balance every weapon around each other, uh, and there's no, there's no offset, there's no... There's no strategic balance. What I'm saying is, if you have a better resource, if you have a better blankety-blank something, you should have an advantage, right? If you have the ability to make lasers, like, we're going back to resource five, like the five resources. If you don't know, From the Depths used to have wood, metal, scrap, oil, and crystal. Um, and oil, you, you did make fuel out of oil, uh, crystal was important for AIs, it was important for lasers, it was important for shields. And so, without crystal, you couldn't even have automatic vehicles. You had to pilot it all yourself, which was really cool about From the Depths. Like, you had to fight to get better things, better resources, better units. Once you fought and killed the other, like, you fought and killed other factions, and you got the resource zones, some resource zones had just wood. Some had just crystal. Some had just scrap. And it was great because it encouraged you to build cram boats if you had a lot of scrap. It encouraged you to build lasers if you had a lot of uh, uh, crystal. And that's why today in From the Depths, the eight factions of Neater have different weapon types. It's because back then they had different resource zones that, you know, it fit with the lore. So you'd capture them and then it'd introduce you to a new weapon type because you were able to build that weapon type. Now that everything's totally available to players at any point during the game, there is a lack of progression in From the Depths. You don't go anywhere because you're already at the end. You're not able to get the satisfaction of building a big battleship and fighting an enemy battleship because all the enemies have big battleships, but they're they're all made for, for every player vehicle. You know, they're, they're made to work everywhere with everything instead of being strategic and specific anymore. The satisfaction of building a battleship is gone because you can always build one. Ammunition regen is something I've been bitching about for months because ammunition regen makes it so that you can have that battleship at the start of the game. You just save up the resources before the Deep Water Guard even declares war on you. You've beaten the game before you started it. Now, if you have ammo regen eliminated, you build a big battleship, you don't have the ammunition to fill the guns, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, really? Uh, anyway, that, that's my little, little biff about that. I, I don't want to rant for more than five minutes about that. Let's just go back to this, because I have a feeling that all of these weapon changes are going to be for naught. They're going to be worthless. And I say that because ammunition is regenerative, because no matter, no matter what factors you have in your equation, that ammo regen is just multiplying everything by zero. The whole thing is just multiplied by zero. You can't balance the game around something that's infinite. Missiles cost a fortune. When Drabba did the missile update, missiles cost a fortune. Why? Because missiles hit hard, and they're a good strategic weapon. But why do they cost a ton? Because they're a good strategic weapon. Why is this a problem? Because ammunition can regenerate. Meaning, the longer the fight goes on, because you have infinite ammunition, 
let's say an, uh, uh, let's say a missile costs 400 ammo and you have arbitrary amount of ammunition because it really doesn't matter let's let's i'm not using the real prices here but let's say the missile costs 10,000 resource points to fire that arbitrary number so that you can grasp the scale of what i'm saying it costs 10,000 resources to fire one missile if you fire just the one missile from your gantry now you reload that missile with with ammunition the ammunition it doesn't cost anything because let's say you have enough to supply 400 ammunition to reload that missile that's only four ammo boxes so regardless of the time it takes if you wait long enough you know it'll regenerate and i think it's a 10 percent so you only really need to wait a few seconds for it to regenerate up to full um i think it's like a minute and 40 no no wait it's way less than that my math is just off um anyway every time you reload that missile that cost gets divided you know it's cost over one at this point. So 10,000 over one missile fire is still 10,000. 10,000 over two missile fires is 5,000. It's 5,000 costs to fire that missile twice, or 5,000 per missile fire to fire that missile twice. If you're firing an infinite amount of times because you have an infinite amount of ammo, the missile cost is 10,000 over infinity. That's zero. The missile costs nothing. So no matter how much you raise the cost of the physical missile, it's not going to matter. No matter how much you make them more agile, uh, better hit rate, no matter how much you make them uh, hit harder, no matter how much you nerf advanced cannons, it's not going to matter because of ammo regeneration. I can't stress that enough. That's the biggest change you can make to the game to make it an actual video game. Really, Nick, come on. I, I know you disagree with me on this thing, but look in the comments section. I want you to get everyone in from the depths that you can to either agree or disagree with me. Just argue with me. Because there are going to be people that agree with the ammo change, there are going to be people that disagree with the ammo change, and I will bet you the majority of people in From the Depths right now are going to disagree with it because it changes the status quo of what they want to be. They, they, they want their game to just up their own play style. But the problem is you've alienated every other type of gamer. You've alienated even me. Like, someone who devoutly loves the game because it's no longer a game anymore. It's no longer something that people can play. It's something people go into the designer for five minutes, build a model ship like you're looking at the GIF right now of a nice model ship that's been there for a while. That's all people in From the Depths do nowadays, because that's all the game's made to do. And Rhea, the dev, you know, bless your heart, you're great and all, you're a great dev, you're hardworking. But the problem is, it's like this, is a, this isn't model ship simulator. You would be great in like a... Like a like a like a modeling game you would your talents could be used so much better than in from the depths but it, it's like i feel like this is a waste of, of potential you know we're coming so much closer to from the depths full release and it's that that potential everyone felt in their heart when they played this game and fell in love with it i feel it's kind of going away because as we're getting closer to it the chances of this game living up to its potential are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking in fact, the excitement of this game looks like a logarithmic graph. It's just, you start strong and it goes real, real flat, real fast. But uh, I have actually been ranting about this for eight minutes. So let me get the rest of this update out of the way, because I don't want to keep you guys here forever. All right. Now, I, I know I make a, a talking point every now and again about this, uh, but let me know if I should keep these to separate videos, because I would love to make separate videos about this. I just don't want to like make a video about me bitching about something. You know what I mean? If you guys want to hear me talk, like, in depth about why I think ammo should <laughs> not have regen, because I, I really could could talk for an hour about it. If you guys want to hear that, let me know in the comments. Um, or let me know on Discord. I listen, you know. Just tell me what you guys want to hear about From the Depths, because I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll tell you. 